and welcome to The Flow. I am your community manager, Doc Rock, and today I have a special guest, Mr. Jerry Speak of The High Podcast. What's up, Jay? What up, Doc, man? Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be your guest co-host. I am not Katie Fox for all you guys <laughs> listening or watching, so um, sorry to disappoint, but I am very excited to fill in for her. I, I got big shoes to fill. But you do play you do play one on TV. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, the reason why uh, we brought Mr. J in today is because we want to talk a little bit about pod swaps. And I had mentioned this before in a couple of shows when I come back from podcast movement. It was one of the more popular topics during podcast movement as I was watching things going down there and hearing people talk and going to different sessions. Uh, Rich Graham and I had a conversation about it because I believe that Rich went to a session where they specifically talked about it. And then when Rich came back and was talking to me about it, I was like, this is brilliant. Now, uh, we'll cover a couple different sides of it, but it was kind of apropos when Katie was going off to the conference with Caleb and they're enjoying themselves in England, knowing good and well I would have wanted to go so I could slide into a Manchester United game. I'm not angry at all. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, I was like, you know, I, I think I have the perfect person to fill in because randomly Katie and I were both back to back guests on the Hive podcast. Well, it wasn't really random. I might have planned that. I might have put some effort into making sure you guys were back to back. <laughs> when it's random to us, the time that she leaves would be perfect right after she had her appearance on your show. Yeah. So it was kind of perfect, right? First of all, before we dive all the way in, um, Jared, I just want to tell everybody a little bit about you, but I'll let you explain the podcast out of it. Jared is one of the coolest creators in the planet. I had the pleasure of uh, meeting Jared through Tom and Heather, and then randomly I was listening to his podcast after hearing you know Tom and Heather talk about it. Tom was on, and then Gary the Everyday Dad was on. And then Gerald Dunn was on. I was like, wait a minute, this guy just pulling all the heaters. And then he has some superstar <laughs> lady named Diana Gladney. And I was like, oh, man, this is really, really good. And I got a little email. I was like, hey, would you mind coming on to my show? And I'm like, me? What? All right, cool. Episode 51 or 53. Oh, oh I finally forgot what it was. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, well, actually, I've been on a couple of times. Uh, but it, it's a really good podcast. For the people who are listening, who have fortunately never heard of Jared Spink, uh, please tell them about the Hive podcast, Mr. J. Yeah, man. So uh, thanks for the kind intro. This is always funny because I'm used to being on the side where I'm asking people to explain what they do and who they are. Uh, so yeah, I host, as Doc said, the, the Hive podcast, which is a podcast all about creators and creativity and really the entrepreneurship that goes into creativity the ups, the downs, the struggles, everything that just goes into being a creative these days, because I feel like hearing those stories, especially the struggles and how people get through them, motivates anybody that's listening to keep creating, to keep doing what they're doing. And that's ultimately the whole goal of the podcast is to motivate anyone that listens to go out there and create. If they're in the, like, if they're deep in it and they've been creating for a while, we all have those struggles. We all have those ups and downs and we need that motivation and we all go through it. And so I hope hearing those stories helps you push through and to keep going. And that's, I mean, that's the gist of it, man. That's the whole goal is to keep people motivated, to keep them creating and to make sure they know that they're not alone in the struggles they face. That is clutch. I think it's very important to let other people see the way we do it from the inside. I think that a lot of people, and this is something I can say to everyone who's listening in the audience and everybody in our live studio audience, and we are recording live. We have a live studio audience every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern. You can find us on our Ecamm YouTube channel. I think a lot of people that I've worked with that I've helped set up studios or coach or whatever, they don't get that it is absolutely cool to have that kimono wide open now and and this is in the proverbial sense please do not walk around <laughs> in your teenage mutant ninja turtle skivvies with your kimono not in public at least <laughs> <laughs> not, yeah not in public at least right not the teen and if you are going to do a teenage mutant ninja turtle skivvies um i'm gonna go maybe donatello i'm just saying anyway so I think that people should let more of their audience see that inside, that sort of behind the scenes. And your show is almost a behind the scenes. You're inside the mind of a creator. 
And to me, that is just absolutely fantastic. It is still one of my favorite shows. And I love to hear that even the people that I think are above me kind of like <laughs> run into the same roadblocks I run into. You know, so I think that part was great. When you had Sean Cannon on and Sean was just talking about, you know, his his upcoming and sort of what he goes through, even as a quite seasoned pro, like it was very interesting to hear that side of the conversation. So appreciate you for the work you do. Yeah, that's fun because like a, as an interviewer, you ask these questions and you hope to get some insight into some of the behind the scenes and you, you don't know what the response is going to be. You don't know what what people are going to say. So you got to be prepared for anything. And that that was one I wasn't expecting, but I was super happy he he shared it on the show. Yes. I, I love that you say that as an interviewer, I have a surprise coming up for my people later today, but not on this show. That's mm -hmm. on my show. You're going to have to come over there and see what it's <clears> about. Okay, I'll be there. So let's talk about pod swaps. Have you heard this term before? I heard about it when, when you started talking about it. And when you mentioned it, I, I think I told you when you came on the show after you went to these conferences, it's an amazing idea. It's an amazing 100%. idea and it's a great way to support each other. And, you know, I talked about this at, at Leap Into Podcasting as a podcaster. Your number one question is like, how do I grow my podcast? You want to be able to grow your podcast and it's difficult to do. And obviously the number one way to do that is through video. We talked about that. But PodSwap is another great way. It's a fantastic. I would say it's like, you know, you got one A and then one B because pod swaps is is huge. It's huge because you're lending or well not lending. You're stealing somebody else's credibility from their audience. Essentially, you're borrowing it to help your show. And you're also, you know, giving your credibility with your audience to help them grow theirs. So it's it's a great idea. Yeah, it's it, it reminds me of. Uh, sort of the peanut butter and the chocolate and the old Reese's Cup commercials, right? The two good things come together and you end up with something really, really fantastic. So basically <laughs> for the people that are playing along at home, there's two types of pot swaps. One is what would be known as an episode swap. Actually, technically there's three. An episode swap would be like, I would go do a episode of the Hive podcast for Jared and Jared would go do an episode of Creator 50 or The Flow for me. He's a little bit young for Creator 50, but we'll let him slide. <laughs> um, I'm getting there, man. I'm getting there. Don't worry. The minute you say, Doc, my knees hurt, I'm like, bet. You can cover for me while I come on vacation. But I tend to go on vacation in San Diego, so I'll be with you anyway. <laughs> so that is where you're basically like swapping studios, right? You could do this as live productions. You can do these as special episodes. You can do these as a trading space. It's like that old TV show that used to come on TLC. Another type of pod swap, which I believe is super advantageous, is to do ad read for your friend's show. Now, I do this naturally because Jared's show is just super dope. And whenever I see Jared in the chat, and if I'm on my live stream, I always tell people they should definitely go and check out the Hive podcast because as creators, there's some insights that you're going to get from listening to a show. It's very valuable to my audience. It's helpful to introduce my audience to Jared's show, but it's also helpful that my audience, I know they're in good hands. Like Jared's the freaking Allstate man, right? If I pass my people, if I say, Rob, man, I know you're growing your Disney thing. I need you to go over and check out what Jared's talking about on this show. Rob goes there and he checks it out. He goes, oh man, this is great. And then one day Jared's like, you know what? I haven't had a Disney creator on yet. They're some of the most psycho creators in the planet. Hey, Rob, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you got the episode swap and you got the advertiser swap and then you got to host each other's show. So one day I would just go and I would be a guest host on Jared's show, just like Jared is a guest host today. That's the pod swap that we most recently did because like I stated in the pre-show, Katie and I both were guests on the Hive podcast uh, releasing very soon. Yeah. And now Jared is a guest for us. Now, it's great that there's three different methods to it, because I think the 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 style of your show would kind of dictate what method you want to do. Right. Because not each method will work for each style of show. Correct. Like, yeah, it'd be real funny to have you on as a guest for um, let's say somebody who has a go get them girl podcast. 
Yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's not going to match. Say, like, hey, this is uh, Jerisa Spink. <laughs> I'm, I'm here from. Uh, but they might, but they might do like a, a quote unquote ad read for the high podcast if they enjoy it to send their audience over there. So that's where it would make sense to figure out which method works for your style of show. I think you bring up a key point. So what would be some of the considerations that you would have in order to say do an ad read for someone's show? The considerations, I think it, what it comes down to is if you, if there is a show that you enjoy listening to, I think it's worth maybe reaching out and talking about doing like a quote, I hate using the word ad read, but like an ad read for that person's show to send your audience over there because your audience probably has a lot of the same interests that you have. That's, <laughs> that's why they're listening to you most likely. And so if you're interested in a podcast, your audience might too, and they might actually you might even build a stronger audience because you're giving them more valuable resources and tools for whatever it is, because you're giving them a podcast they may not know of. And pod, people that listen to podcasts are always looking for new and more podcasts to listen to. So they're going to be grateful. Yes. I, I think I agree with you. I kind of, I don't like the terminology ad read so much either. So I was sorry. That's my old radio brain kicking Promo in. read. We can say promo. We're going to call there them promo go. swaps because then that's a good, it's a promo read or a promo swap. That's where like, and I often do it as natural as possible. Like I'm often like uh, gang, if you're, if you're a creator and you want to have some good insight on what goes on in the nugget of us creators, you really got to be listening to the Hive podcast by my buddy Jared Spink. First of all, Jared's a class act. He's a really good guy, but he brings on some of the top creators in the industry. People like Sean Cannell or the Everyday Dad or myself. And of course, Miss Diana Gladney, you know, things like that. So you can talk it through like that, you know, tight T-shirt Terry. <laughs> So you can uh, you can talk about it in that particular sense. And in that way, it's like when I was in Dallas, Rich was like, yo, I got this restaurant I want you to check out. And so Rich took us to go to Terry Black's barbecue and could nobody from the Ecamm fam say nothing for like a half an hour solid because we were just feasting. It was literally one of the best experiences I ever had. So one, hanging out with my homie, but taking it to a good restaurant, introducing your friends to dope pods like that is not dissimilar from introducing your friends to your favorite restaurant or your favorite watering hole, if you will. So I think that last, last method is pretty dope. Now, I just noted, and this is sidetrack for a second, people, everybody playing along at home. This is why you should come <laughs> to the live tapings. Speaking of my buddy, Rich, I'm looking at the comments and Rich said, let's introduce a fourth method. The fourth method, we're going to call this the gram swap after my buddy, Rich, record your own ad and send it out for others to play. I like that. Yeah. You know, that was my first thought when you mentioned yeah. When you mentioned them, like when we first talked about this and you asked me to like send you over one, I thought you were asking for me to actually like record one. So I, I thought those that's what they were, what Rich is saying. But that is a great method because you lend your voice and you're getting your voice out there to more people. And who's who's better to explain your show than you? You know who does that really well is the New York Times Network and the uh not radio lab network what is that thing called npr <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm gonna say the radio lab network sorry jad abin rod yeah they do that really well they will run ad reads from the host of a different show on a show be like hi i'm sean creepy doctor and this week on the hidden brain we're gonna talk about eating barbecue with rich Graham. So I hope I did Sean they're good because that was a really bad uh version of him but that's a dope show by the way yeah. I mean, that's a great way to do it. But ultimately, like you just got to find the method that works for you because all you want to do is try to get your show in front of more people and someone else's audience. And you want them to basically lend you their credibility, their audience for 15, 30 seconds. So you can try to get more people over to your show. Yes. And, I, you know, I think the other thing that's good about the way that Rich mentions it, this is this going to sound super corny, but. I can do ad reads like a champ. Why? Because I was in radio for years. Like, it's just part of the game. I was listening to Uncle Ray, Ray Edwards' podcast yesterday, 
And uh, Chris, his son, reads incredible ads. But Chris also comes from radio. So sometimes you want to have, you know, someone read it for you because they're just really good at it, right? Yeah. If you don't feel comfortable with reading it, but you have somebody dope in your community, I think, like, Rich has a fantastic voice. I could get Rich to read one. Uh, Rob has a really good voice. Um, Luis is loud. You might not know this. He talked quiet to us in backstage. But in reality, that dude's loud. Yeah. <laughs> so you can so, have like you can have Luis do you a read, or I was like, hey, Luis, can you read this in Spanish for my crew this week on the high pocas? I'm gonna I'm gonna say there's a fifth one now, right? Is we okay, can do a we do a we do a, a hybrid, right? Because I'd much rather say, hey, you know what, guys, if you want to learn more about what it takes to develop a podcast, you really should listen to the Flow podcast put on by Ecamm, Katie and Doc. They're fantastic hosts and you learn a lot. Let's have them tell you a little bit more about the show. Doc, take it away. And then like, bam, have you do it. So not only are you lending your voice and credibility to their show, and then you also, you know, get to introduce them to your audience. I like that. That's a good, that's a good sandwich read. We used to call those sandwich reads in the radio where, you know, you would start it. I would put in the part that comes from the ad agency and then you'd close the end. And it makes a nice sandwich read. I think that shows like Smart List, which is one of my favorites right now. They do that really, really well. So, man, you guys are getting all of the heaters today from Mr. J. Red, because <laughs> that is another fantastic way to do it. You can also use these for IG reels, you know, when you're doing your promotion, or you can use them for, you know, some of the shorts where that is sort of effective i wouldn't necessarily do it say on youtube unless there's a point uh, people come to youtube looking for answers and a commercial right. is not really an answer but you right. might be able to get away with it in ig or linkedin or something of that nature but i gotta stress moderation right moderation and anything oh. just like editing just anything moderation right because you don't want to bombard your audience right and you don't want to seem like you're selling out your credibility to every single show that you listen to or that wants to get in front of your audience. So moderation, definitely. Very much so. You know, I get requests from time to time to be on shows and I actually kind of like to do a dive on their show first to see how it is. I have been a guest on shows and in the middle of it, I'm like, why did I do this? <laughs> And it's not, I know the people got to try it. Everybody's getting in where they start. And so I don't know why they would think this, but maybe somebody thought, oh, if I get Doc to come on the show, like it might give me a little boost. That is possible. But what you don't want to happen is like, I don't want to have, let's say, Daryl Eves or Mr. Beast on my podcast so I can have one episode that rips. I'd rather have the slow climb up the mountain growth and eventually get to the destination. Like how you tried to get me lost in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get you lost. And I took you everywhere. It man. was, it was the Uber driver's fault. It wasn't your fault. <laughs> I would just go ahead and say, I'll let you off the hook. But yeah, I, I think you have to be real careful of getting like, or wanting that one big, you know, fish, if you will, because you're you're not going to be able to sustain the audience if you're not ready for it. So definitely put some thought into it before you do this. How say you? I agree. You got to put some thought into it. Um, just like you put effort and thought into your show, you want to do the same thing with what you, you know, put on the show and what you promote on the show. Definitely. All right. So I got one more question for you. And this one's a good one, I think. <laughs> Who is somebody that you would love to interview that you haven't interviewed yet? Ooh, that's a good question, man. I always have a running list. Let's see. I, I'm going to answer that a different way, right? Because I don't want to spoil any future possible guests, right? Because I, I like them to be surprises, right? <laughs> always thinking like a true podcaster. <laughs> I will say there is somebody that um, I am working to get back on the show that was... I got so much positive feedback on this episode and this episode probably changed the way I approach my interviews a little bit. It made me way more comfortable with the show. It was a real turning point for me as the host of the show. I have a guess who Pat Flynn. No, 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 no. Cause that was one of my favorite shows. No, no, it was, it was. And you know, some of the people here might not know if you're not like following like the filmmaking niche on YouTube, but uh, Danny Gewurz. So Danny came on the show almost two years ago. 
It was a fantastic episode. That show still is probably the top is the top performing episode of the entire show, right? Out of 98 episodes that are now up, that one's still the best performing one and continues to get listens, even though it was from two years ago. Um, and I'm working to get him back on the show. That's a, that's a trend I've been doing is having repeat guests come back on because our journey as creatives over the last two years has changed so much. People have gone away and come back. It, we've, we've gone through so much over the last two years. So having people back on, hearing about what's changed. I mean, Danny's now making a full on movie. His channel was, was small when he was on and now he's over a hundred thousand subscribers. He's gone on trips with Maddie Hapoya. He's done all these amazing collaborations. So getting him back on is going to be great talking about how that growth has affected him and how it's changed his creativity. So that's, that's what I'm having back on soon. Hopefully, you, you know, it's really funny. He just got married. So I'm kind of working with that too. <laughs> During the rise and shine of certain podcasts, sorry, certain creators, everybody was all about Peter. And then when Peter and Maddie started working together, I resonate with Maddie more because he's more of a goofball like me. And I mean, talented is all gay, but I just like his style better. And Maddie laughs at himself constantly. And so do I. So I actually think if I were to hang out with them, I'd probably be more app to hang out with Maddie than Peter, even though most of us shooters, they just love themselves with Peter McKenna. I just think Maddie's a much funnier person. And even better than that, <laughs> his brother is the best. Tepa is freaking super funny and doesn't know it, but he's just super <laughs> hilarious. There, I think maybe it's just something super genuine about Icelandic people because it's cold, so you got to be nice to people so that when you stand next to them, you can absorb some warmth. Um, but they're just <laughs> super, super great guys. I really would love to kick it with them. So I, I think that's a, uh, a good call on the episode um, because I think it would be very interesting for your audience to see, yeah, how – Things have changed and what is it? What is the growth like? Uh, what's the same? I think everyone wants to know what's changed. I think another thing is what's the same? Because you there's assumptions, right? People are yeah. gonna have assumptions that a lot of things have changed. But like for us, one thing that never changes, white balance. You must white balance <laughs> your stuff. I don't care how good the tech get, the tech still ain't caught up with a good, you know, X-ray color checker. Still has it. <laughs> I keep hoping for it, but nope, still gotta have it. <laughs> All right, so before we go to Q&A, I would like to ask a good question. What is something about podcasting in general that you feel enough people aren't asking? Ooh, enough people aren't asking. I think I think too many people are asking about what gear they need, right? And that's not the most important thing. Just get the the basics to get started because um, the gear will come. You're going to upgrade. You're going to find different stuff. I mean, I've used four different microphones in the last almost three years that I've been doing the show because you find the one that you like and until you find another one that you like, right? You move on. But I, I think enough people aren't asking, um, man, that's such a good question. What aren't people asking? Because there are so many questions related to podcasts. And I keep thinking of what people are focusing on and they're focusing on how to grow, which is important, how to make money. I guess that's important, you know, depending on, on your goals and what you need, uh, the gear, like, okay, that's all mediocre stuff, but how do you, how do you, I think enough people aren't, I think people aren't asking, how do you stay consistent? How do you keep going? I mean, that's been my biggest struggle since I started the podcast. I thought I'd be at a hundred episodes like way before now. Right. But life gets in the way, work gets in the way, stuff gets in the way. So how do you bounce back and keep going when you have those low moments and those down moments that make it tough to get back to scheduling an episode, to hit record. I mean, hitting record is probably the hardest thing to do. It really is. <laughs> it is. And there's so many things that can get in the way. And so how do you stay motivated? Um, even when, you know, you have plenty of reasons not to be motivated. I think that's an important question. There you go. Okay. So normally I like to save the Q and a for the Q and a in order to give a little bit of bonus to the people that come for the live taping. So just a reminder, we do the live taping every Tuesday at 12 PM Eastern, 
But Julie just asked a really fantastic question. So I'm going to actually pull one from the live studio audience. Oh, see, that's why you got to watch live, guys. Come you on. You got to come to the live show, right? <laughs> I, I think live taping is one of the dopest things anybody can do as a podcaster. And here's a here's a question from Julie. I'm going to attempt to read this out. Good. <laughs> it says, what are your thoughts on taking a break from your show? I'm on a break now after three years of weekly shows. I need the break, but nervous about listeners not sticking around. Okay, I'm going to let you answer that first, Jay, and then I'll give my answer. Okay, so she's not on a three-year break. She's just taking a break, but she's yes. been going for three years, I think, is, is if I'm understanding that right. Um, breaks are important. You absolutely have to do them. And if anything, I think that makes your audience a little bit more, um, I don't want to say faithful, but like committed to the show. Because I'm going to assume that you watch TV, right? Because all of us watch TV. Do you have a show that you like watching? And what happens when like the season's over and they take a break? You look forward, you you anticipate, you're excited to see what's coming for the next season, for the new episode. You're excited about it. And I think that taking a break builds more excitement around the show. I, um, so people aren't taking it for granted. I think after you do it for weeks and weeks and weeks, people start to take it for granted. And it's not to when there's not a new episode. They're like, wait, wait, where is it? I don't think they, they forget how important it is to them. So it builds commitment to the show. I think taking a break is important. Um, and most important, and I've learned this from <laughs> making the mistake, just keep your audience informed. Like, hey, we're going to take a little bit of a break. I need to recoup. We're going to you know, plan some future episodes. We've got some exciting things in store for you. So we're going to take a quick break. But if you enjoy the show, don't worry. It's not going anywhere. Go back and listen to some of your favorite episodes. These are mine. Go check them out. You know, so you you can still keep that audience listening. Um, but, you know, it's just it's the nature of things with podcasts. It's it's an up and down slope. So I think taking a break is important. Absolutely. I don't think it's going to affect your audience. I have actually seen more growth on my show when I come back from a break. I see yep. more downloads and more listens when I've come back. So take that for what it's worth. I bet, yeah, that's that's a fact. <laughs> I think two good strategies on breaks are mailbag episodes, right? Because you can record them in chunks on the way, or you can just sit down one Sunday and just go through a bunch of questions that you get from the chat like this here or from your email or from Twitter or wherever you collect questions, right? For us, it would yeah. be like Discord or the Bali. Do a mailbag episode. I also think another fantastic hitter, and this is something that Roy just mentioned in the chat as well, is to do a best of episode or compilation. Sometimes you have a hitter, right? So something comes up next week and Jared needs a break. Jared can say, you know, I want to play back for you what has been probably my favorite episode. Now, um, wifey and I are going to go to Hawaii and I'm not going to be able to put out an episode this week, but I wanted to bring it back in case you're new to the show and you missed this. Or even if you listened to it in the past, to me, this is my favorite episode. So I'm going to put this up for a rebroadcast. When I return from the islands, I will be back again. And here's the next guest up on deck and then play the Danny episode or play yeah. the Doc Rock episodes. See, th those are all great <laughs> ideas. Um, but I still go back to like, there's nothing wrong with not having a new episode up every week. Oh, 100%, I think that's, 100%. that's totally self-imposed on us because of our thoughts on YouTube, right? Because if you don't put a new episode up every week on YouTube, yes, that does hurt your channel. It really can. But podcasts are totally different because there is no algorithm ranking these really. I mean, there is, but for most of our shows, it's not going to affect us. Well, you remember at Leap, right? The conversation was season, season, seasons. Like yeah. everybody was all about the seasons. I personally don't do seasons um, because I will lose track of it. <laughs> but um, yeah, do seasons. Like Tom, Tom is really good. Tom Buck, the Enthusiasm Podcast is really good with these 10 episode seasons. And then Tom goes play with the dog for two months. <laughs> they yeah. come back. And, and do you know what it does? It makes the audience more loyal to the show because they look forward to it. They're like, they're bummed when it's over and they look forward to when it's back. I know this because I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so, I, you know, and I will also say this too, Julie, my Red Sox are taking a break until April um, because um, we got to find 
pictures. So, you know, I was about to become a Padres fan, but they just as bad. <laughs> so, hey, man. Hey, 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 hey. We pulled it. We pulled it together. We beat the Dodgers. And so that's all I care about. <laughs> right. Whether you like it or not, it happens and everything. If it was up to me, uh, cherries would be 24 7, but they are much better when fresh season not these you know aqua things or been frozen things or something like that and so we're used to it with tv shows we're used to it with fruits uh man game of thrones will put us on pause for two and a half years and then they'll come up with a hitter like hot d hot d is actually amazing house of the dragon <laughs> i think the the fear of not wanting to take a break it's a bigger content creation issue in the grand scheme of things because we've got in this mind frame that if we're not creating we're not growing but that's just not true. It's just not true, yep. especially when it comes to podcasts. So absolutely, it's okay to take a break. But the most important thing, I think, is you got to just, as your show evolves, keep your audience informed and keep them a part of the process. Yes. And they're going to appreciate that. 100%. If you tell your audience, you know, here's a funny thing that I think people forget. Uh, do you know when you grow as a human? When you're resting. It's the reason why kids between the age of 12 and 15 are so hard to wake up. And yep. why do they sleep so long? Because they're growing like like a weed, as grandpa used to say. Grandpa didn't know about my growing. Never mind. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it, it, you know, Doc, like, it, it's true. I really have seen more growth in the show when I've come back from a break. And yeah. and you got that energy, that fire. like Right. Mm. And you're going to have peaks and valleys. I mean, when you look, if you go look at your podcast analytics, of course, you're going to have a, a spike when a new episode releases. Of course, because there's auto downloads, people listen the day it comes out and then it trails off because then you get the people that listen during different times and everything. But that's just the nature of podcasting. It's never going to be a steady like upcline graph where it just goes up nonstop. It's all peaks and valleys. But the important thing is that those peaks and valleys slowly go up over time. Those downs aren't as bad as they are when you first start and those ups go a lot higher than when you first started. I mean, I look at my graph and it's it's like that nonstop, but it continues to go higher overall. So don't be afraid of taking a break. And to run it back to this theme, you can always do pod swaps while you take a break. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you can have you can have people come in and fill in for you while you're gone. This is one of the benefits of having a little pod swap network type situation set up. It might even not be that they come and run your show you can play an episode of their show on your feed i've actually yep. seen that done before too so i guess that kind of makes it a fifth way to do a pod swap i already i already came out with a fifth way that's a sixth way <laughs> oh yeah okay see man by the time we're done jared and i are going to need a whole course on pod swaps <laughs> so gay mr j tell the folks how to get a hold of some hive action because to me it's one of my favorite listens and I think what it is, is I've had the experience of listening to you grow as a podcaster over the last year and a half. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. So you can uh, you can go follow me at Jared Spink on Instagram or Twitter. Um, you can go check out the show at at the hive underscore podcast on Instagram um, or just go to the Hive podcast on your favorite uh, podcast listener of choice. But there's also a video version, of course, because uh, we're all about video here. So you can go check out the video version of the podcast on my YouTube channel. My channel's name is Jared Spink. It's just me. Uh, go check it out. We're we're almost at 3,000 followers or subscribers on, on YouTube. We're like seven away as of this morning. So if you guys haven't subscribed, go subscribe. Hit me, uh, hit 1,000, uh, 3,000 today. That'd be great. That would and be dope. if you do that, if you do that, you're going to be able to see the live recording of the Hive podcast, which will be our 100th episode tentatively scheduled tentatively for the 16th of this month so exciting oh dude that is dope okay yeah, yeah, yeah. all right let's go let's go get jay over the lump for that hundy and then let's all show up for the hundy and let's just ecam fam swarm his hive we'll bring our bees over to his <laughs> hive we'll just go over there and just take over we're gonna do the hive podcast to take over with the flow riders right we'll show up on our bikes <laughs> with the tassels on the side. Well, somebody is coming. Someone is coming to take over the show that that episode. It'll be me as the guest and a special guest host. Be fun. Diana Gladney always teases 
that when her and India opened up the floodgates on my Let's Get Live community, they were like, we got our bikes and we rode over to Doc's house. We seen all these bikes in the parking lot at Doc's house and we just went over there. And so they brought all these people <laughs> to the yard. <laughs> so, yeah, we we're going to all get our, uh, what was it, PF Flyer was a wagon, the Huffy. You want to have a little huffy with oh, the tassels yeah. on it and ride over to Jay's house like Sandlot. <laughs> okay, <laughs> guys, thank you so much. Flow Riders, thank you for coming to the live taping. Thank you, uh, Julie, Roy, and Rich for allowing me to like use you guys as, as examples during this show. If you yourself want to become a part of the live studio audience, not really a studio, it's virtual, um, make sure you are on YouTube every Tuesday, 12 p.m. Eastern over on the Ecamm channel. You can find the podcast at flow.ecamm.com. Of course, you can reach out to us, questions, comments, feedback, want to be a guest, want to find a particular guest, you can hit that all up over on flow at ecamm.com or jump on to the volley on the volley is one of my favorite new apps you can do it with your phone you can do it with your computer you can leave a question via video you can leave a question by text or just audio it's a really fantastic way for you to engage with your audience so big ups over to the squad at volley that that's a wrap man we did another fantastic show but you know we could not do this show without two things one to flow riders because you guys just absolutely rock you make it easy to sit down and have a conversation with my buddy jay and talk about the hive podcast and pod swaps and all because i feel like you know we were chilling at a taco stand off of b street in san diego it's called the taco stand it's amazing i don't know why they named it that it's just <laughs> amazing <laughs> Uh, I thought, this can't be good. Who would name someplace something this dang stupid? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. We got the best tacos, man. Right across where we work, by the way. Um, <laughs> but we couldn't do this show without the team over at Speedify. Speedify is this application that is really, really small and really, really inexpensive, but it acts as a VPN. I know you got VPNs out here charging anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks a month to protect you from all myriad things. Speedify is like less than a sandwich, right? You can get Speedify and it does a couple things that I find amazing. If you ever have spotty or questionable internet connectivity, say your Cox or your Xfinity or your Spectrum aren't being your friends, you can let Speedify allow you to attach your phone's connection as a backup connection. And so if one starts to dip, the other one will kick in and it can save your bacon on that next important podcast recording or interview via your favorite podcast recording app, Ecamm. We use it to save our bacon during Leap in the live stream. Two years running. Wasn't on purpose. <laughs> just happened that the internet over in Amesbury, Massachusetts, decided to be a goofball. And you know what? The phones just kicked in. My Netgear hotspot, the Nighthawk just kicked in. And we didn't even know. At the end, I get this pop-up. Speedify, hey, we saved your butt. <laughs> and this is how many times it tried to die. But we saved you. And there's little, you know, confetti and stuff. It's, it's amazing. So please go to Speedify.com and give it a look-see. You know, just tell them the Ecamm squad sent you. Thank you so much, Speedify, for sponsoring the flow. You guys absolutely rock. And can't wait to see you guys next week right here on another edition of The Flow. Shh. Greetings and salutations. Mm -hmm.